Ultrasound B scan for B scan for posterior segment disorders. Ultrasound B scan, as we are very well aware, is an extremely important modality of investigation in patients with opaque ocular media to diagnose the condition of the posterior segment and to plan the treatment. The first case which I am showing you all is a case of vitreous hemorrhage. In this we can see that the vitreous hemorrhage is appearing as a radio opaque density. On real time you can see the excellent mobility which is seen of the hemorrhage on moving the eyeball sideways. This suggests the after movements which are reflected in the dynamic B scan tell us that this is a vitreous hemorrhage and not a retinal detachment because the leaves of a retinal detachment would be attached anteriorly to the ora serrata and won't give us after movements. The A scan is not mandatory in these cases as you will appreciate in the other diseases also which I will show you all because the dynamic echography is adequate to diagnose the various membranes which we see moving around in the vitreous. Here again as you appreciate that's associated intra gel and also subretinal hemorrhage which is seen in this. Here the optic disc is seen which is clear. The membrane which is there is emanating from the optic disc but is not attached to the disc and it's free. There is little density in the preretinal space which is of the liquid hemorrhage which is seen. The dynamic nature of the test is very useful in these cases. In this patient you will appreciate that there is an associated choroidal coloboma which is seen, which is an excavation seen in the retinochoroidal layer inferiorly at the closure of the optic cup during the embryogenesis. There you can see it on the arrow. This excavation is very typical of a retinochoroidal coloboma and is usually seen in the inferior quadrant in the line of the disc. There might be an associated optic disc coloboma also in these cases. This patient has an associated vitreous membranes which are seen in this. There you can see the size of the coloboma which is being measured. This is a very small coloboma which is very difficult to pick up but with sensitive newer machines in a patient with opaque media like a mature cataract this can also be seen very clearly. There you can see the excavation again with an overlying posterior with hyaloid membrane which is seen. In this case the sonography was performed to rule out the evidence of a retinal detachment associated with the coloboma. This is a next important case which we see a case of retinopathy of prematurity. This is a very young child hence the images are not very good because the child was not very cooperative and we didn't sedate the child because the child was just one month of age. Here we are trying to grade the severity of ROP and you can see that most of the retina is attached but there is evidence of fibroglial proliferation with mild to moderate tractional retinal detachment which is seen emanating from the disc and moving on to the arcades. This patient had zone 1 ROP which was progressing from stage 3 to stage 4. The child had undergone multiple sessions of laser. The color box is also being tried to use though because of the movement artifacts the images are not clear. But you can see that the color box is extremely useful in diagnosing the various vitreous membranes and in some cases you'll see that even we can see the flow in the Clockett's canal. Here again we are showing you the fibroglial proliferation emanating from the disc going into the Clockett's canal. The tractional retinal detachment was not significant enough to warrant a vitrectomy or a buckling procedure and this child recovered just with simple laser under close supervision. In advanced cases of ROP you can almost have a closed funnel detachment and the type of the closed funnel whether it's open anteriorly or open posteriorly can also be very well delineated with ultrasound B scan. 
the dynamicity of the test is what I would like to show you all is that the membranes with their movements and their reflections can give us a guide whether it's a retinal membrane or whether it's just a vitreous membrane. There again you can see the proliferation over the optic nerve head coming into the vitreous as a band. The band is hyperechoic and there's an associated tractional retinal detachment around it also. This next case is a case of a patient who underwent scleral buckling surgery. You can see that the eyeball shape is deformed. This should give us a clue that this patient has either undergone an external scleral buckling procedure or it can also be deformed in patients who have got a penetrating trauma where there's a puncture or perforation of the eyeball leading to hypotony. Here you can see the delineation of the edges of the buckle which is indenting the sclerochoroidal coats and there's associated vitritis with vitreous debris in the vitreous cavity. But you can see that the retina is very well attached. There is no evidence of retinal detachment. This test was performed as a pre-cataract evaluation in this patient to tell the prognosis. Here you can see the dot-like, speck-like opacities in the vitreous which are seen. But the posterior segment, the retina is very well attached and the indentation of the scleral buckle is very well seen. This buckle is a little more on the higher side and hence the indentation is seen. It's almost appearing like an hourglass shape of the eyeball. Most of the ultrasound B scans are done through the lid itself. We don't uh, do it on the eyeball. We use a coupling gel, which is usually a KY jelly. This is the next patient who had presented with a very chronic detachment in this eye. And you can see the configuration of the detachment. It's almost like the two leaves of the retina are attached to each other with multiple intraretinal cysts which are formed. And the vitreous also is very turbid and opaque. You can see that these, these membranes are not showing any after movements and they are quite rigid and taut. That's because of the advanced stage of PVR which that eye has undergone due to the retina being extremely fibrotic with membranes around it and there are multiple cysts which are seen. The patient was advised against undergoing any surgery in this case because the visual prognosis was extremely guarded and almost nil because the condition of the retina with cysts is extremely poor functionally also and structurally to reattach his retina would be a very big, big task. The color box is being used in these cases to help us to diagnose the various leaves and the membranes which we see moving around in the vitreous. Usually a vitreous membrane is absolutely avascular and doesn't show any flow, whereas the retina and the choroid show excellent flow characteristics. The history of the detachment in this patient was more than a three years. Here again the color box we are using. The flow which you are seeing in the peripheries in the choroidal layers and also the membrane which is there is showing very minimal flow as you can see. This suggests that the detachment is almost avascular. This again is showing you a case of a fresh retinal detachment in which you again see a membrane which can be mistaken for the vitreous. But here you can see that the membrane is highly echogenic and it's attached to the posteriorly to the optic nerve head whereas anteriorly it's attached to the ora serrata. Hence it doesn't show extreme after movements unlike the vitreous membranes. But in rare cases of giant retinal tears where this membrane has a giant tear almost 180 degrees, the membrane might fold itself and give an impression of being like a posterior vitreous detachment. But that's very rare. Here again as we are seeing, 
This is a case of an intraocular foreign body which is embedded on the retinochoroidal layer. See the extreme echogenic nature of this. This is a metallic foreign body and it entered the eye when the patient was hammering. See the shadowing which is seen in the orbit which is posterior to the foreign body and the tract of the foreign body which is formed in the vitreous cavity from the site of entry. and the associated vitreous hemorrhage. This helps us in planning out the treatment in these patients with the vitrectomy and we don't have to search for the foreign body in the eye because we can locate it almost perfectly with the ultrasound. A CT scan might help us also in planning our treatment better.